Unless you want to donate. <laughs> Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you have your Bibles open to the book of Judges. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be in the book of Judges for a little bit. We are just starting a new series uh, through the Judges. And just seeing what we can learn, uh, which there is a lot to learn uh, from out of the book of Judges. Uh, initially, I had planned, um, I had a friend of mine wrote a book that was basically a book of outlines. Of, he, he called it basically, not nameless, but uh, more unknown individuals in the Bible. So he, he's got 94 individuals. And they're like alphabetical from A to Z that go that span basically from Judges through the Chronicles and Kings. Uh, folks that were not only just use of God, but and also you got some of the, I guess you could, villains, uh, heroes and villains basically, obscure heroes and uh, you know not basically unknown villains uh, in Scripture. And then I was I couldn't think of how to break that down into like. Five to ten weeks, 94 individuals within five to ten weeks. It took them about a year and a half to be able to do because each one is a, it's his own individual lesson. And then I, I just kept thinking, this is a, this is like judges in a sense. It's, I mean, it goes through some of the judges, but as far as like, um, I just kept going, kept kept thinking to go back through. Just this is like, in a sense, almost like trying to preach through judges, which is it still covers a, a long span of time, uh, but it's easier for me to break down. So that's, that's why I decided to start. We're going to be learning in Judges. Okay, so Judges technically is the period of Israel's history uh, beginning from what would be the conquest, leading through to, um, even though the book itself um, ends in a little bit of later period, but it would be kind of leading up. It's a little bit concurrent with some of the uh, first Samuel and also with Ruth. Um, as well, but towards the time when we see in, in Samuel, uh, First Samuel in particular, that um, Israel demands a king, and then you have the monarchy actually get established, where God where God establishes a king or a kingship in, in Israel. Uh, so the book itself, there's a dispute as far as the, the not the historicity of it, but like the uh, span of time in which it covers. Uh, some estimates give about 410 years to about as, uh, as late as 480 years as far as the time period in which it covers within Israel's history. Uh, you see that Israel itself follows a pattern within the book and it's pretty much established if you go to chapter 2, um, chapter 2 beginning all the way Good morning. Good morning. We're in the book of Judges. Uh, in uh, Judges chapter 2. So uh, Well, we'll start at verse 1. Uh, Judges 2, verse 1, and then we're going to skip down a little bit. And then it says, And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt, and I have brought you into the land which I swear unto your fathers, and I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Okay, so this is the Lord asking. Thank you, John. You have the Lord asking Israel as to why they didn't obey with regard to driving out the people in the land. The, we'll see in the, in the first chapter as far as Joshua is still alive, and even to some degree here in chapter 2, but this is getting to the point where he's about ready to die, and then they're already 
uh, beyond what they've already established in, in Joshua as far as the conquests that are uh, take where, where they lead into the land uh, that God's promised them. But they didn't, they didn't fully obey. And now you skip down to verse 10. Um, and also all that generation that were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Uh, verse 11, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtoreth. And then the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies, whithersoever they went out. The hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Uh, nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them, and yet would not hearken unto their judges, uh, but they went a-whoring. This is Israel that wouldn't hearken unto their judges. Uh, but they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, uh, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of the uh, out of their out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Uh, and it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. And they ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn ways. Okay. We could go on reading to the end of the chapter, but it's basically the same pattern that's repeated, is that they didn't communicate from one generation to the next, or didn't, either they didn't altogether communicate or did a very poor job in communicating to the next generation who God was and what he had done for them. And in turn, the generation didn't really know God, so they just went about doing, uh, as we'll see later on, that, that which was right in their own eyes. And so they just had a disregard altogether for God's promises, God's covenant to them, uh, his blessings that were promised to them, and such. And so they just were like everybody else that was around about them, and that was never God's intent. And so God would allow them to be spoiled, uh, to be taken captive, uh, to suffer hardship. And in their uh, anxiety and their vexation and, 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 and their grief, they would cry out to God, and God would hear them, he would be merciful, he would raise up a judge to deliver them. And then as long as the judge was following God and as long as the judge was alive, they would follow. Uh, but at, at the point where the judge would pass off the scene, they would like, hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, they, would, they, would, uh, they would go ahead and pass off. We're in uh, the book of Judges chapter 2. Uh, Judges chapter 2. Uh, you have a Bible. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a Bible in the pew in case, in case you might not have one. Um, so the, the children of Israel seem to have followed that same pattern continuously. Now that was never God's intent, or that was never God's desire, but that was just what happened uh, because they were rebellious. Okay, so in our first point in our outline here, we see that Israel followed a pattern of disobedience, and we see that from what we just read. All right, God's original intent was blessing. Uh, we see that from in chapter in chapter two, verses one to three. Um, right, it says, uh, "An angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and I said, and said, I, I made you to go up out of Egypt, and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers." Now, when did that happen? When did that happen? When, 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 when was that promise given? When did God swear to the fathers? Yeah, it started actually with Abraham. If you want, go to Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Okay. 
Um, we'll start at the first verse. So after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Now he's referencing something that God had told him previous a number of years back, and that would have been, we see that in Genesis 12, where he initially was approached by God, told to get up, get out of this land, and then go to a land that I will provide you. He didn't give him direction, he just told him, get up and go, leave your father's house, and go to a land that I've promised you. And then also he said that uh, his, uh, he's going to have a seed that all the families on the earth are going to be blessed by. So in other words, there's, he's, it, this is the promise of Messiah that's going to come through him in particular, as well as that he's going to give him a land. Uh, and then so now he's coming back to him. This is a number of years later, uh, and he still doesn't have a child. And he's like, well, what's going on? Lord, you made a promise here. So that's what he's referencing here. Um, and uh, Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Okay, and he brought him forth abroad, and he said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. Okay, and then now skip down to verse 18. This, uh, this, we've skipped a little, a little bit, but basically he's going to make a covenant with him. And he's going to have where two sides of an oxen are going to be cut in half, laid in between, and then he goes in between. But rather, he's put to sleep. God goes in between the two, uh, basically signifying, hey, I'm going to fulfill the covenant. Uh, and um, here, uh, verse 18, it says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, uh, now, this, he's already here. He's already walking about where uh, the land is, but he wasn't given a specified, like, okay, you got to be uh, at this GPS location. But rather, here, here's God's promise to him initially. And this was God's intent originally for him and for his seed following. Uh, this is, um, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, which is the, the, the river Euphrates. Okay, and the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Riphaims uh, and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. All right, so uh, that's a lot of individuals, a lot of people that are named there. Um, we, we, we saw earlier as far as when we were looking as far as those were out of Canaan's lineage and they would be wiped out. God's intent was for to be wiped out because of the iniquity that they had performed in the land. Uh, but he's wanted them to go from the river in Egypt, which would be the, the Nile. Okay, it's the Nile River, all the way to the Great River, River Euphrates, okay, which is where 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 is it modern day? But even though it still would have been during that time, even though what's that? Iraq. Yeah. Bordering. Yeah. Yeah. Well, technically, Mesopotamia would have been more <laughs> upper fertile crescent. But yeah. Because uh, the, the Tigris would follow. But yeah, that one would have been over down that way, close to Ur, not very far. And then you would have across. Well, if, if you go into the actual body of water, then you would have. Persian Gulf, and then you have Persia over on the uh, opposite side, uh, neighboring. But yeah, it would be modern day Iraq. Now, how much of Israel does, or how, how much does Israel have of that land? How much? Actually, they don't have any of it. <laughs> they only, well, part, I'm sorry. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have from Euphrates westward to uh, Jordan River. That would be, so anything west of the, or excuse me, east of the Jordan, uh, they don't really have, okay? Um, we see that's 
in large part because of their disobedience, but that was God's intent for them. God wanted to bless them. God had promised them. God had given it to them, basically. He had given command that they are to go to be strong and of a good courage. Joshua had led the folks. Now, I, if we were to go back into Joshua, we'd see that he made some mistakes as far as making leagues with some of the folks that are in the land. And prior to his death, he wasn't able to go ahead and lead the folks to be able to run out all of uh, the inhabitants there presently. Uh, but uh, we see some of that in chapter 1. But God comes to them and approaches him. In, 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 uh, he says, why have you done this? Why have you done this? Okay. Because of that, they ended up forfeiting blessing. That's, that would be our second part over here. It says, uh, God's original time was blessing, but Israel chose rather to forfeit blessing for sin. Now, you could probably give any kind of number of excuses that you would want to say, well, the people were larger, they were, uh, had better technology uh, to fight us with. Um, but they had the hand of God with them. As far as Israel did, have the hand of God with them in fighting them. So it seems God's impression of their not being able to get the folks out was a choice that they made, uh, not an issue of circumstances. Does that make sense? Like in other words, they, regardless of whatever they would have encountered as a difficulty, uh, if we go back to even in Judges chapters, well not Judges, uh, Joshua chapter six, when they came up against the city of Ai, and then you had the incident where. Uh, the stuff from people was hidden inside the tent um, there because of because sin being in the camp that God withdrew his blessing and his hand of power upon them uh, once they were able to rid the sin from out of the camp God would return to be with them uh, so it wasn't an issue necessarily that they couldn't have dealt with uh, in, in, in coming up in, in encountering something that would have been seemingly possible obstacle or overly difficult. Uh, but what you had rather was an unwillingness for the people to trust God fully for the deliverance of his promise to them. Uh, is basically what that comes down to. And so Israel chose rather to forfeit blessing uh, basically for sin is what it would come down to. Uh, also you see that in verses 20 to or 19, 19 and 20. Okay, and it came to pass that when the judge, this is in chapter 2, it says, It came to pass that when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers, and following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them, they ceased. I'm sorry, we're back in Joshua chapter 2, from Genesis 15, I'm sorry. Um, judges, Judges chapter 2, I'm sorry. Uh, this is in verse 19. And it came to pass that when the judge was dead, that they were returning and corrupted themselves more than their fathers and following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. Uh, they ceased not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. And then verse 20, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he said, Because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice. Okay, I will... I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. That though, excuse me, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Okay, therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Okay, now if you would go to chapter 3, we're going to see a number of those named off of which were left. Okay, uh, that leads us to our next point. It says, though judges were useful and in God's plan, they were not God's original intent. Or they were, in other words, God didn't have, um, he has a leadership structure. He has a chain of command, if you will. Uh, but God's original intent wasn't for the judges to bring deliverance, but rather the people to trust in God for their deliverance. I don't know if I'm making, does that make sense? Like in other words, he's, this is a precursor to what they would ask for in the future in seeking a king. 
Okay, God's, even though his, he has a design structure of authority uh, in, every, in every facet of life, basically, um, God's intent or God's design, God's desire, his heart would be that <coughs> folks would seek him. And in other words, um, he would, that everyone would willingly follow and not have to be obviously forced uh, in, into obedience. Uh, go to Numbers 11, Numbers chapter 11. Establish a little bit of the context, and we're going to skip down a bit. Uh, verse 29 is really what we're going to look at. Uh, and, then, and then, when the people complained, complain, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place uh, Tabra, because of the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Uh, and then the mixed multitude that was among them felt a lot, fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who uh, shall give us flesh to eat? And then uh, we'll skip down. Basically, God's going to give them promise that He's going to give them quail to eat, and He's going to give them 30 days worth, uh, and for everybody, for the whole nation, not just looking for leadership, but for a certain few. Um, uh, skip down to verse. Uh, 16, and okay, the Lord said unto Moses, gathered unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Now note, I know this, now I'm just making an observation of something that he mentions here. This isn't the main point, but this is part of his established authority structure. Where, did, where was this established to begin with? As far as his authority structure of having elders in place and then you have officers and such. God did give that, but where was that initially established with Israel? Actually, a little bit prior to that. Was it Moses? Yes. You would, I guess you could make an argue maybe that it would have been within uh, their enslavement in Egypt, but we see when Moses is basically from sun up to sun down dealing with the people as far as the things that they have that are brought to him, that his father okay, right after the Exodus. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be yeah, not fall, not much, not much longer after the Exodus, but prior to uh, when they received. <laughs> uh, is that you have Moses? being approached by his father-in-law and he says, well, you know, this thing that you do is not good. You know, you're going to wear yourself out and then it's, it's hard for people, so why don't you select? It, it reminds me somewhat of like Acts chapter 6. You know, seek ye out seven men full of, you know, on, on, on a bondage report full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom. And so basically he gives that same type of instruction to him. You know, find you men that are able to, you know, to have God's hand on, on them, basically, that are, that are wise. Uh, to go ahead and help you in this matter to be able to go ahead and judge the people and then you only deal with the most important things. Uh, so you have um, this, you know, a pattern for, uh, for a chain of command, for an authority structure there. But I mean, obviously God, God created all that, and so he would know that, he would give details on that in the law following. Okay, and then verse 17 says that, I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou uh, bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and you shall eat flesh, uh, for you have wept in the ears of the Lord. Okay, so okay, so basically God's going to give his spirit that was upon uh, Moses here and put it upon them. These, these individuals that are, that are chosen out um, 
so that say, same repeated as what he did when Jethro had approached him. So it's, it's, it's kind of basically a repeat of what, what had happened there. Uh, uh, verse 24, Moses basically obeys, and Moses went out and told the people that the words of the Lord had gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them around about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Uh, but there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. Uh, and the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, uh, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. Okay, and then there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, my Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all of the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Okay? So, now I know this is Moses speaking, okay? But God had put his spirit that would have been on Moses uh, on these 70 individuals because of, that's that's what his design was, right? He was going to say, seek ye out 70 men, and then I'm going to put my spirit upon them, and then they're going to go. They prophesied as a result. Um, you got these two in particular of those that were, of the 70 that were chosen, stay back in the camp and they're prophesying, and then Joshua sees, hey, you know, this should be, this is going to be usurping his authority, but rather Moses saw it as like, hey, the more the, the the better. Okay, this wasn't uh, a rebellion, but rather, you know, this was of God's doing that he had put his hand upon them and then now they're as a result of consequence consequence prophesying. Now I know it's a lot, but God's heart in the matter is that he wants his people like that to be ready channels to be used. Does that make sense? In other words, he doesn't want it's isn't Right. For our day and age, since we're in the church age, we're told in Ephesians 4 that he gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Okay, So those giftings and those callings are for some. Uh, so not obviously not everybody's called to be an evangelist or not everybody's called to be a pastor or teacher. Um, but um, those that are gifted as such and they themselves are giftings to the church are given so that the whole body uh, the, the, the saints would be matured so that the whole body basically takes part in the work of the ministry uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ okay, so God's expectation is that though he gives some uh, I guess you could say that leadership calling or that leadership drive uh, the fact is everyone uh, is supposed to be an active participant. And then they, though, um, well, obviously, women are not going to qualify for being a pastor, but the thing is, you would have, um, of, of, I would say, of the men and of those within a congregation, we should be of the caliber of character to be able to go ahead and, if God should call, uh, there's no indication as far as in Scripture that once that calling has been given that he couldn't he could he couldn't change it or, or gift or direct in, in some other way. And so God God's intent, God's plan with that was that he wants his his desire, his heart in the matter is basically that he wants his folks uh, to be, I guess you could say in a sense, self governing. Uh, you need an authority structure obviously to get anything done. And there was in place uh, but he wanted his folks, his people, uh, all of them individually, to be ones that would uh, check themselves, I guess you could say, cover themselves under uh, the rule of his work. Okay, um, And then that's going to lead us to number three here, and that is Israel's disobedience would negatively affect future generations in the heathen nations, even though God is able to make all things work for good. Okay, Judges... 21. Well, well, we'll look at uh, chapter 2. Back to Judges 2. Uh, 
Uh, Ju Judges chapter 2. Starting at uh, verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. Okay, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers and spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them, and yet they would not hearken to their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, uh, but they did not so. And then when the Lord raised them up, judges, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge for repentance because of the Repent of the Lord because of the groanings by reason of them that oppressed and vexed them. And it came to pass when, when the judge was said that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers and following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. Uh, they ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. Um, Alright, we don't have to finish the 23. Question. Who else had the law that Israel had of the nations that were running about them? Well, that would have been way, 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 way before this. Actually, yeah, it would have been way before that. Actually, it wasn't Moses' law, it was God's law. But he was, he was just. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So no other nation had basically access to God like Israel had at this point. I guess that's my, I guess that's my point. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be silly here. Basically, no, but no other nation had access to God other than what Israel had, or at least to the degree that Israel had. Now they could have if they would have come through Israel. Uh, we see that initially, well we, well, we see that a number of ways, but um, you see as in God's law in particular that when the strength, yes? Um, Ur of the Chaldees, because uh, Job. But that, that would have been way before the law was ever given. Was? Okay. He would have been alive. It's possible that he would have been alive just before Abraham, or almost almost at the beginning of Abraham's life. Okay, sorry. It's possible. No, uh, no, I just they would have had knowledge of God. Okay, now the law of God is written in the hearts. We know that, but as far as an, as an established, not just code of conduct, but way of governing uh, for a nation, they didn't, nobody had that as far as. I mean, you see traces of that because God obviously dealt with the world prior to isolating himself to working through Abraham and Abraham's seed. Uh, so anybody that would have had knowledge of God uh, or that wanted it would have, could have, would have had it available. And then when he started to just isolate himself to working through Abraham and Abraham's seed, then anybody wanting to know God would have to have come through his seed, through, his, through, his, through the means of which he wanted to work. Okay, so previous generations, it would have been everybody coming through Israel. Present generation, because of the church, had been wanting to know God, in a sense, it's kind of like how it was prior to when he isolated himself to Abraham's seed and Abraham, which is, okay, now it becomes, but it's, it's through the church. So I guess in a sense, okay, you, that's, how you, that's how you know God. You know, you got his, not just the law written in our hearts, but we got 
you know, the evidence of creation and the conscience, uh, you know, but we, we have his word. And then we, we are given, the church is the pillar and ground of the truth, okay? We're, we are uh, the repository for the truth of God, okay? We, we're not only supposed to keep it, but we're also pass it down to generations following so that everybody would know, know, know God. That, that's his purpose and that's his point with it, okay? Um, so they have exclusive access to God that really nobody else has just because he's chosen to isolate himself to work through Israel's seed, or um, through Israel to, through uh, Abraham's seed. Um, now anybody of the surrounding could have, and we see that even initially in uh, Joshua, when you got Rahab, she approaches the two spies and she says, hey, look, listen, spare my family. We've heard what God has done for y'all and how he's brought you up out of Egypt, and then the fear of you is upon all the other people here in the land. You know, and we know God's going to give you the land here, so please spare me. I'm asking for mercy. And you know, they made an agreement. Uh, she followed through. They followed through, and she spared. And uh, actually, what's interesting is that she ends up marrying somebody that is of uh, royal lineage, and she is in the line of Christ, uh, as far as in, in Christ's lineage. As a heathen, that's supposed to be wiped out. But she came to know God, and she wanted to know God, so she came through Israel. Uh, Abraham's seed there. Uh, it was okay, so God's intent for them was to obviously to be a repository for his word. He was going to send his Messiah through them, and they were to conquer the land, and God is going to do great, mighty things through Israel, to Israel in particular, and he's going to show himself mighty on their behalf for what purpose? For his own glory. Yeah. Basically, God's going to show, this is who I am. And he shows, him, okay, I'm going to use Abraham's seed as the vehicle to do that. Now, here's the thing. They continually bow themselves down, serve Baal and Asheroth, who are... Yeah, they're not. They're just... <laughs> they're, they're whatever, you know? that are being worshipped by the local folks and then they're acting just like everybody else that's around them when in fact, are they like everybody else around them? In a sense, yes, because they're made of flesh, okay? And they're susceptible to the same temptations. But they've been brought out, you know, they've been uh, not only separated and liberated, uh, but God has cleansed them and is working on cleansing them uh, and it's not that necessarily they're better, they're better off. And if they would yield and obey God, then, hey, you know what? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, just like us today. Yeah, they're gonna, they're, they're, God's intent was for them to be different. That, that's his whole plan. Because it's like, hey, look, I, don't, I love you too much. <laughs> Leave you the way you guys are. You guys are messed up as you are. You know? And, uh, but they didn't want that. They wanted to go ahead and be paid be like everybody else and as a result uh, not only well we see that initially okay there rose up a generation that knew not the Lord nor his works and then they would follow in, in disobedience and then God would end up having to judge and give them over to uh, you know their enemies and their neighbors that didn't really you know they hated them because they hated God and uh, you know the funny thing is about that though uh, if they would come to God they'd be blessed as as, as, as Israel was. There wasn't anything to be uh, envious about, necessarily. Um, they, could, they, could have, they, they, they could have the same access to God as, as Israel would have if they would just come to him on his terms. Um, through, through Israel. That's, that's, God's good like that. You know? When they would cry out, now mind you, did they deserve to be in bondage? Yeah, they did. I mean, they actually deserved to be wiped out. But when they would cry out because of the hardship that they were under, God was merciful to say, okay, I'm going to raise up a judge to deliver you guys. And he would deliver them. Okay, so even though God worked it to good and that his plan was, okay, I'm going to lead these nations here to prove you 
and then later we see in chapter 3 that um, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them more at the least such as before knew nothing thereof uh, because there was a generation that knew nothing of actual warfare or the conquests and such that were uh, take, that had taken place as far as for them to be able to even get into land to begin with uh, from where Joshua had left off. Um, so he said, okay, look, I'm going, to use this, I'm going to use this for good. And though he turns the evil for good, the fact is that his original intent wasn't for them to go. You didn't have to go into captivity and, 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 and experience all those negative things in order for me to bless you. Okay, so it's the same thing as you know, uh, um, is it's in Romans six that uh, shall we sin that grace may abound? You know, God forbid. You know, how how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay, so there's a lot of lessons to be learned as far as from from the book of Judges, and this was just a just a quick summary overview, and then we're gonna start looking to the meat of it as far as the actual individual judges that God had raised and um, used to deliver Israel and the things that we can learn from them. Does anybody have any questions? Alright, if not, we are dismissed. Yes, sir.